Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, uh, the volume resolution. Uh, Shelly, welcome, Shelly. Welcome. Shelly, uh, I can be passing these down. Feels if you uh, just take one, pass it down. Did you want to say something else, Derek, or should I? Oh, okay. So, um, thank you again for having me this evening. I know I was here, I guess, um, a month or so ago um, to report to you about the status of the proposed state funding reductions um, for people who have no insurance and do not qualify for Medicaid but are, but are in need of mental health, substance use, and developmental disability services. Um, just as a reminder, um, over the last two budget cycles, two previous budget cycles, the last four years, um, VIA alone has had $48 um, million cut from its indigent fund um, allocation from the General Assembly. Um, and this upcoming budget that is yet to be passed, um, there is a, a possible additional $9 million um, for uh, funding reductions that would directly impact people in the community. Um, just as a reminder, VIA Health uh, commits 100% of the funding we get for indigent care back to our communities through our comprehensive care providers who have probably gone many years without seeing a funding increase. Um, what we know is that these reductions, because of their cumulative effect, um, we're to the point now where they will have significant impact on what services will be available to people in our counties um, who don't have insurance. Um, and so just to give you a little bit of a recap, um, I talked to you about this group before just to give you a heads up. Since that time, there's been some, some good movement. Our board of directors, and Mr. Beal can speak to this, we always thank him for his work on our board and as chair of our county commissioner advisory board. Um, they um, passed a resolution requesting the General Assembly to reconsider the funding reductions and also to um, reconsider the formula that they were using um, for, for doing these funding reductions. Um, our County Commissioner Advisory Board has passed that resolution. <coughs> to date, uh, six, all six of um, uh, six of the far west counties, with Macon being the last of the seven, have passed unanimously these resolutions. And partly that's been really supported, and I don't know if you had the chance to read it, that um, uh, Representative Corbin has really come out um, and has worked with uh, Representative Josh Dobson, who is the chair of the Appropriations Committee, to say we did not really realize that these funding reductions were being passed in this way, that they would have such a negative impact to Western North Carolina, which is obviously the area they represent. Um, he's talked with uh, many of our commissioner members, both our board members and commissioners in the far west, to encourage them to go ahead and pass the resolution so he can begin working to either have this reconsidered um, before the budget passes or in the technical amendment phase. So we feel like through this work we're getting um, both some support from of course our Western delegation but also um, that there's some attention coming out about this. And So um, I'm going to ask, uh, I know that Commissioner Beal, you, you know you're involved in this in a big way. If you have anything to add, I don't know if uh, County Manager well, I agree with Shady. First of all, we appreciate uh, the candor from Representative Dobson. Here's was his quote from him. It's one of my few regrets with the budget. Uh, he just he just missed it. Yeah. He said he'd be honest. He just missed it. The budget, the formula. If you don't know, it, we don't get in the weeds on it. But the formula has always been based on cash on hand within the LME local management entity. Mm -hmm. Well, this year they rechanged that formula. Now some places it helped, like down. Let's say Trillium, that's the LME on the East Coast. Now they got extra funding because of that. Now that formula helped them, but it devastated us. The formula they used. It's really, it's going to impact Macon County and all the far west counties, but especially Macon County. We've, all, we've been the leader in mental health services for a long, long time. We have a walk-in center. We have things that no other counties have. 
Graham County, Cherokee, and all those counties, they've even went to the, they even went far enough to pass resolutions in support of Medicaid expansion. Yeah. And now that's, so as that Representative got Mr. Berger's Corbin attention. has been supporting that bill. So, yeah. uh, Ms. Truman, I would be more than happy to read the resolution if you think that's necessary. And the one thing I want to mention is we really appreciate because it was actually Representative Corbin who brought it to um, Representative Dobson's right. attention in communication with some of us. And so he's been, um, I really appreciate his advocacy in bringing this issue to the attention so that it can be addressed. And hopefully, you know, while we wish that they would restore, they wouldn't take any funding reductions by revisiting the formula, at least we would have perhaps less of an impact here for people in our counties and mr chairman you saw the statistics on the uninsured in macon county oh we're one of the top 10 in the state of course and and with the mental health and substance abuse those are i mean our providers what they struggling uh, six out of the 10 people they see don't have the ability to pay yeah, I mean, just as a, I'll give you a quick number. Um, in the last quarterly report we provided to the County Commissioner Advisory Board, in one quarter there were over over a thousand people being served from Macon County. And the really good thing about Macon County is that um, the vast majority of those folks get services here in Macon County. Um, so that would be for indigent care, state funds. Um, you have some number that get care, the facility-based crisis at Balsam and the behavioral health urgent care there in Haywood County. Um, but it's a pretty significant number that can get their services here and don't have to drive. So we have made some advances. The Balsam Center is wonderful. <clears throat> There's no really nowhere to send folks for long-term care. We heard Paul just mention that. I, I admire uh, anybody that takes a bed, buddy, and bucks to make this thing work. But with these cuts, Mr. Chairman, we could really, and Mr. Representative Dobson and certainly Kevin re and mm -hmm. Rick and I have real, the farther you get from Asheville, the farther west you get, the worse we are. That's just a fact. Geography and Including broadband, mental health, and, anything yeah. else you want. So uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, if you want me to read the resolution, I'd be happy to, or I'll make a motion to approve it. Yeah, you, know, you can, if you would like to make a motion, that's your uh, prerogative on that. So, so I'd, I'd make, make a motion that we support this resolution in support of funding to meet the mental health, intellectual development, disabilities, and substance use disorder service needs for the citizens of Macon County, and that the legislature restore uh, those funding and use the formula as being based on for many, many years, which is a cash on hand, which would basically put us at even. It wouldn't be no cut, would be no increase in funding, but at least it, it would not be no cut severely. So I'll make that a motion. Increase. Oh, so we have a motion by Commissioner Bell, a second by Commissioner Shields discussion. Um, I have uh, had lunch with uh, a Representative Corbin uh, last week uh, and discussed this. Uh, I know he is uh, well on top of it. Um, I personally uh, have some uh, feelings about the way this resolution is has written. Um, I feel it's uh, again just my personal feelings. I don't disagree with the principle of it. And, uh, I feel like it was a little too strong at times, and but maybe that's the way it needs to be taken. So uh, mm -hmm. I, at this mm -hmm. time, I'm not prepared to support the resolution. But uh, Representative Corbin knows that I'm very well uh, stand behind the gist of what's going on here about. Um, uh, restoring that funding and uh, making sure that our, our needs are met and, and he, he is aware of that so um, you know, if anybody else would like to speak to it that's fine okay. Okay. <coughs> so we'll call the vote call the vote all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye aye all opposed, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Yeah. Uh, the vote fails to pass the resolution uh, three to two. You're Commissioners to take the uh, Gillespie and Higdon voting against. It's right, so Shelby sad that we're the only county in the far west that would not pass this resolution. Well, we appreciate Representative Corbin and everyone's yeah. support. Well, I do too. Mm -hmm. It's just sad. All right. Um, too political. Moving on to old business. Green